the month of April 2019 you realize that your life is now ready to go to the new direction which was not very clear which was seemingly full of fog as they call rahu <laughs> from the last 3 months i would say february march april or oh, sorry january february march and now from april you understood where you have to go how far you have to go and with what speed you need to go and now is the time as the month of april comes to an end you change your direction but still you are at the same place which means you know where to go but you have still not started the journey so welcome to the month of may 2019 where you will finally make that shift it's not a question of direction now the direction is very clear you know where to go you know which places to leave behind there are so many things which you will leave behind in this month which you already left behind in april but now you will say bye bye <laughs> so this month is very crucial because it decides the tone for the entire year because major retrogressions are happening during this time and there are some major conjunctions also during this month we will discuss about them in short here and there you go if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation from me then you could go down to my website if you want to know how this month will be you could book a reading from me and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so now there are very interesting things which are happening the day 1st of may is kicking off with three planets in the sign of pisces we have moon mercury venus in the sign of pisces this is a very interesting conjunction because this enhances learning creativity any kind of good stuff in this world this also encourages spirituality because pisces is the sign of jupiter and venus is exalted here and mercury is in debility so now you will see whichever houses mercury rules in your chart there are there is a lack of awareness regarding those houses because as i always say exaltation and debilitation is not good or bad it's a degree of awareness that you have so depending on your ascendant wherever the sign gemini and virgo is falling you will realize that there is a lack of awareness on how to deal with the with the, with those areas concerning those houses but depending on the uh, your ascendant whichever house is venus rules in your chart when you include those areas to solve the issues of the houses ruled by mercury you will realize that the problems are easier to solve because mercury is getting nicha bhanga nicha bhanga means the debility is getting cancelled by venus now what does this mean that the debility is getting cancelled it doesn't mean that the planet is not debilitated it simply means that so take the example of a person who can't see a person who is blind imagine a debilitated planet it's like somebody who is blind <laughs> so now suppose the person wants to cross the street and there are too many cars on the other side on both the sides in fact and the person is wondering how will i do it and imagine on the other side of the street one of his friends see that oh my friend is trying to cross the street but because he is blind uh, it's very difficult for him to cross the street so then what happens he comes there and he tells him that my dear friend don't worry i'll help you in crossing the the street now it does not mean that without the friend the blind man cannot cross the street he is always crossing the streets by himself but it's a bit of a struggle but now his friend comes and helps him now this does not mean that the blind man gets eyes so whenever you see that there is something called as nicha bhanga people start jumping that oh my planet has become exalted no it doesn't become exalted 
the debility is mitigated by the help of another planet. So now Mercury's debility is being mitigated by Venus. So suppose in your chart, uh, Venus is the seventh lord, for example. So then your partner could help you mitigate the issues related to Mercury. This is just an example which I am giving. Or if Venus is the eleventh lord, then Venus, uh, your elder brother, your friends, they could help you mitigate the areas where Mercury is struggling. And then finally, as the month kicks, we will see that Akshay Tritya is there on 7th and Akshay Tritya is the considered to be the best day of the year because that day sun and moon are both in their exaltation signs. And this year Venus is also in its exaltation sign. So this year's Akshay Tritya is again very special. On 7th, the Akshay Tritya is there and that is the day uh, I will make a video on Akshay Tritya and I will post it on 6th. So that uh, that will be a separate video. I will not speak about it here. So you can watch my video on 6th of May to know more about what Akshay Tritya is and what to do during Akshay Tritya. But in general, uh, it's very good for doing anything new, any auspicious activity. Now, around that same day, 6th, 7th, Mars is entering the sign of Gemini. So when Mars is entering Gemini, what is going to happen? It is going to be conjunct Rahu, point number one. Point number two is, it is going to be under mutual aspect from Saturn. Because Saturn and Ketu are in the sign of Sagittarius. And Saturn is retrograde, about which I will speak now. So Mars and Saturn, whenever they come in conjunction, or in retrogression, you will always see that wherever this axis is falling in your chart. So for example, now wherever the Gemini and Sagittarius, that axis, because Gemini and Sagittarius are seven houses apart, so wherever that axis is, you will see that there is a strain in those houses, which means Regarding that axis, the activities which you want to do will not be happening in one attempt or it will not happen in the way, in the velocity, in the speed which you want it. Suppose you thought that I will submit some document and this will be done in three days. But no, it could happen that it takes more than three days. It takes around four days, five days or maybe a month. It could happen. And whenever mars saturn comes together or they are mutually aspecting each other you will always see that you will try your best to control the situation but then you will fail to control so lesson number one wherever sagittarius gemini axis is falling please do not try to rush there if you rush you will bleed so take it slow as in hindi they say na aram se jao <laughs> And then what happens? Mars will become, as Mars moves ahead in the sign of Gemini, it will also be conjunct Rahu. Of course, that conjunction will be more when uh, June arises. So that video of Mars Rahu conjunction, I will make later on. So I will not speak about that here. But the conjunction will start. So you will see whichever houses Mars is ruling in your chart. Regarding those houses, so Mars rules the number 1 and the number 8 sign, Aries and Scorpio. So wherever Aries and Scorpio is falling from your ascendant, you will see during the month of May that you will want to very aggressively, you will want to very aggressively pursue the traits of that house because Rahu is the Karaka for desire. It rules the original 11th house of Aquarius. Desire. So all your desires will come out regarding the houses which Mars is ruling in your chart. And you will always see that you will feel that the society is not doing enough to fulfill your desires. So suppose Mars is your 10th Lord, you will feel that your boss is not giving you a promotion or your business is not going the way you expected. Because Rahu always gives you a feeling that you're not good enough. You need more. You need to be even better. So the point is, whichever houses Mars rules in your chart, 
you have to understand for the next 45 days that this is all a cheating business which Rahu is doing which means Rahu will tell you that oh my god if you don't do this now then you will never be able to do it then you need to sit down and calm down yourself the world is not going to collapse if that is not achieved in these 45 days all right so don't think like that but as you know Rahu is smoke illusion he will try his best to tempt you and Rahu will also tell you that you don't need you have to take a different approach to things regarding the houses which Mars rules in your chart you will see this at least I am seeing this in my life because Rahu represents things which are outside of the boundary so Rahu will tell you that now you have to break certain boundaries and the zodiac sign will tell you what will be the dynamics of that and it's in the sign of Gemini which is the sign of communication so make sure you do not unnecessarily get into battles in YouTube or social media and such stuff unnecessarily because Rahu will compel you to think that you need to fight with everybody but actually you don't need to fight with anybody you just need to fight with one person who is that you and your own anarthas we have to fight with ourselves our own weaknesses the shuddery poos the six anarthas which are there inside our heart once we conquer them then there are no enemies Krishna says to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita that one of the great one of the symptoms of a great soul is it doesn't have any enemies and in the Mahabharata we also have the example of Yudhishthir Maharaj he was known as Ajata Shatru which means no enemies of course many people considered him to be apparently his enemies but except a few at a generic sense everybody loved him he was unanimously loved even his haters loved him of course they would never admit this uh, now then sun is already in its exaltation sign from 15th April to 15th May so as the month creeps in as April uh, May starts Sun will be in the sign in the nakshatra of Bharani and on 4th the new moon is there in the nakshatra of Bharani so that day what you will notice is that there are certain things which you know is going to happen but the process will be slow because Bharani represents things which are very slow or whichever house Bharani falls you will realize the things related to those house that 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 house is not moving the way you want it it's moving but it's moving very slow because Bharani represents the elephant the elephant walks very slow and you will realize that regarding the house where Aries is there's a lot of background check up which you have to do so for example if Aries is your 10th house then you will realize that there are so many things which you need to do in your career which you thought maybe you don't have to do you thought that it's very simple I'll just do this and it's over but no Bharani says no slow down take time make notes and then you move ahead you will always see just check where Aries is all right and then Akshay Tritya I already told you and then gradually Mercury also will move out of debilitation and it will join the Sun and Sun Moon and Mercury will be you know having the new moon of course on 4th and then as the month moves ahead you will see that Sun will enter Taurus and when Sun enters Taurus you will feel that after 15th a lot of the rush which was there has come down you will feel that now it is more important to focus on our sustenance you will want to connect to family members you will want to connect to people who you already knew but you ignored them now is the time that you will see people they will want to come together to stay like a family unit and this always happens when sun, in, sun enters Taurus and Venus will be again in the sign of Aries so Venus will enter Aries ar around uh, mid of the month yes Sun will enter Taurus Venus will enter Aries 
and venus will also be in a gandanta zone which means the last degree of the water sign pisces and the first one degree of the fire sign aries so this will be around the mid of mid of the month so that time depending on the houses which venus rules in your chart you because see this is the final gandanta there are three gandantas one is at the cancer leo axis the another is at the junction of scorpio and sagittarius and this is the final gandanta in pisces and aries so now you will see that the houses which venus rules in your chart finally they are taking a new direction so for uh, people like taurus and uh, libra ascendants especially taurus i would say you will feel that your entire existence is going to change around mid of this month all right that you will feel and mercury will also feel that in the beginning of this month because mercury will enter aries very fast and mercury will also go through the gandanta zone all right so mercury ruled and venus ruled ascendants your new life is starting now all right so all the best for that and as the month goes uh then you will realize that mars and rahu will become more and more and more and more and more close all right and then after some days of course you will see that mars will be with rahu opposed by saturn which is retrograde and ketu and sun mercury will join together in the sign of taurus and as the month ends finally sun uh, sorry mercury will enter the sign of gemini its own sign by the time the month ends all right so mercury will help a lot of this conjunctions for example mars saturn opposition mars rahu conjunction mars ketu opposition so you will see that in the month of june there is a bit of coherence but again the problem is mars and rahu will be nearing each other very soon in the month of june and rahu as we know is hovering around in punarvasu nakshatra so many people are telling me that oh we met this person 20 years back now we are meeting them it's very typical so this will also keep happening and in june especially june july many planets will be in punarvasu so then you will see these traits coming out more and regarding the mars rahu conjunction the fl initial flavors of that you will start finding it around 8th or 9th of may because that day moon will be together with mars and rahu so the day moon joins you will see uh, you will start seeing the effects all right so this is what i would like to say and especially this month is very important for uh venusian and mercurial ascendants because their new cycle is beginning and regarding jupiter it is retrograde it has entered jeshtha nakshatra so regarding that i will speak for 2 minutes i will make a video on jupiter's out jupiter out of gandanta on 8th may i will make a video on that so i'll not speak much here i'll speak there so now jupiter and saturn are both retrograde so as the month of april, uh, april ends and may begins you will realize that especially regarding saturn because saturn is just retrograde you will realize that just recently you did something regarding the houses ruled by saturn not very long time ago but now again you will do it <laughs> or now you will finally finish off things which were lurking from many many days and regarding jupiter's entry outside of gandanta which means less than 29 degrees which means you know 27 20, 28 27 26 like that it means that now whatever which of houses jupiter is ruling in your chart those houses whatever was supposed to be done you have achieved you have understood the reality now you are in jeshtha back now you have to maintain yourself there so the month of april was the month most important month of the year because it it was you know involving jupiter's gandanta and saturn stationary and so many other things now now there is nothing new in the month of may 
it is just maintaining what you already saw in the month of april okay so that is what my analysis is on the month of may this is a very crucial month because the energies are finally shifting and you are ready in the car to move ahead so move ahead but do not get into arguments with people and regarding the houses which mars rules in your chart just relax things will things don't necessarily have to go the way you want all right but it will move, happen the way it should happen all right that's the lesson which will know. okay that is it from my side i hope uh, you could get a gist of what could be there in this month and if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation from me regarding this month then you could go down to the description section to my website to book a reading from me and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him bye bye